Welcome to The Spirit of Business, episode number 59. Does business have to be busy? With Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Matt. I have a question that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently. I had a teacher, my Chinese master, and she always used to say, how's it going in your business? Is it busy? Business should always be busy. But she was always teaching us not to be busy, except that actually she trained us to be extremely busy. So we had to work really, really hard, but we were learning not to be busy. It was a very interesting combination. But my question is, does business have to be busy? Or is it good for business to be busy? And what is the link between business and busyness? My goodness gracious me, what a question. So <laughs> there's about 400 different things that just came to mind then when you were posing that particular question to me to be able to respond to it. And great that we have the opportunity to have that conversation because I, I dare say we'll be, it'll all come out when, we, when we're chatting. But I suppose the first thing is that it's interesting. I often talk to business owners and say, um, you know, how are you going? And generally, everybody's response is always busy. And whether you're an employer or employee, you know, it just seems to be the, the, the standard answer from everybody nowadays is that I'm busy, which is good, okay? So my cheekily follow-up question to that is, is that are you good busy or bad busy? And so I know that's a, a very plain English way of talking about it, but it gets people to, to reflect. And what I'm really saying there is that are you productive, you know, or are you just being busy for the sake of being busy? And I think that that's really the, the, the question that you're posing there because, um, okay, are you working light? Are you, are you working heavy? Are you being productive? Are you just being reactionary? Are you being proactive in terms of what you're doing? What are you doing? And so it gets people to start to think about exactly the work they're doing during the day and at night, usually if they're thinking about it a lot. And then I suppose the contribution that that's making and the, the productivity that it actually produces as well. So, so I know that's probably skirting around to answering the question directly, is it, you know, do you have to be busy in business? And I think I like to think about it and go, are you being productive and are you making a contribution that has an impact, which is ultimately what you're trying to do in business is to actually have, is make a contribution to have an impact in terms of the, what the business is doing. Now to do that, the busyness is probably part of the how you're doing it. And then it, 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 busy can be good, as I said, but it can also be bad as well if, if it's not being done in a, in a responsible way. So that's probably my opening answer to your question. Well, I've got about 400 things too, so we're going to be very, very busy in this podcast. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things that as a business owner, um, I can be very productive. But sometimes I look at it and I think to myself, wow, you're getting a lot done, Sarah. So it's not a question of like good busy or bad busy, but it's a question of is could you be doing something better? Hmm. I don't mean better outside of the business, I mean better inside the business. And I notice that it's really easy to use busy and productive, so good busy, mm -hmm. as a kind of, oh, I'm being a good person, I'm doing the right thing, so I don't have to ask too many questions. And every now and then I'll sit down and I'll start to ask bigger questions. And it shocks me how much it changes what I do in my business if I do that. Um, there was one moment last year, and we actually talked about it in the podcast, where I sat down one weekend and asked myself some really deep questions about what am I doing and where am I going, made a big decision that has impacted everything I've done since then. If, if I hadn't done that, I could have gone on being productive and busy and all kinds of things and, and not made that decision. And the impact that I would have as a result, at least as far as I can guess, um, would have been dramatically different and I think dramatically less. So it brings up to me that, and, and there are so many things in fact that are going around in my mind which shows that I do tend to be busy, I don't think it is, I think it is productive, I don't think it's always the best way to be. And I'm, I'm wondering where's the place for reflection, 
for slowing down as well as speeding up, um, for not necessarily more balanced, but more of a range of ways of being in business rather than just busy. The word that just really came to mind then when you were talking is the word conscious. So what I just got from your that story you spoke about there where you asked some deep questions of yourself is that you're being conscious about what you're doing as opposed to just getting caught up in the day or the task or and this is something that I, I've probably personally been reflecting on a little bit is that I can walk into the day and and sometimes not have a lot to do like but yet by the end of the day I've done I've been flat out all day and running from one thing to the next thing and and I think to myself at the end of the day I said well that was all necessary but it feels very reactionary like it wasn't me being very proactive about where I used my time. My time probably got, um, uh, was required by other people to be able to, to, for them to move forward, okay? So it's productive and efficient for them. And obviously I made a contribution to that. So I can look at it in a very positive way and said, well, I enabled so many people to be able to do their job to then progress the organisation and the tasks forward. But I looked at it from my perspective and say, well, was that a good use of my time today? Is that the best use of my time today? Uh, and these are the deeper questions that you ask. So there's a consciousness. So because I can quite easily get to the end of the day and, and go, I don't know what I actually did today. I don't know whether that was good, bad or otherwise. If I don't think about it and stop and reflect, I'll just go to the next day and do the same thing and the next day and do the same thing. And so therefore stopping and reflecting and being conscious about it like you did on that weekend, then I think, and look, the answer could be when I reflect is to say, no, that is the right use of my time to enable everybody to continue on moving forward. And so therefore, I just need to be present. So I turn up to the organisation to be present. I turn up to a meeting with a client and be present and, and deal with whatever is actually um, in front of them in terms of their concerns and thoughts and issues. And maybe that is the best use of my time, but I, I need to make that decision. And I think that's that consciousness that you're talking about. And presence is a really interesting thing because when I'm present, I never feel busy. Mm. But so I feel busy when I'm not that present. And I've noticed myself also even with you sometimes and I stop myself, I've noticed myself wanting to answer the question busy. And I've because I've been questioning quite a lot, I don't want to say as my answer, how are things or how's the business going or how are you? It's like, I'm busy because it's so easy to say that all the time. And I thought, but I don't want to be a person who's defined by busy. And um, I went through a phase recently where I felt quite busy a lot of the time. And I, I knew I was getting a lot done and I knew I was doing good things, but it felt like a pressure. And it's very interesting this week, I've got more on my calendar um, than I've had any week this year for sure, like quite a lot more. So it's much busier in terms of what's happening. But I've realized we're on Thursday now that actually I've really enjoyed it. So what's that? Like, I, I, I know that I've, I've been making an effort so that I don't get into that, oh, I'm so busy and I just want to have more time for this or I just want to have more time for that. It's like, I don't like being in that space. So I made a conscious decision that I'm going to love doing the things I do and I have really enjoyed this week a lot. Um, so there's a lot of choice, I think, in what we what we mean by busy and how we experience busy, um, and the effect, the impact that it has on us as a result. And, and you you hit the nail on the head then when you spoke about choice, and and I even came in today thinking, you know, I've got a a, a day full of things to do. Okay, and and um, I can either label that as a, I've got a really busy day today and, yeah. and go in with that attitude, okay, or I can go, oh, there's a whole lot of really interesting things that are going to happen today and probably a whole lot of stuff that I didn't anticipate is going to happen is going to happen and I'm going to have to deal with it and it's probably going to railroad all the other things that I've got <laughs> in the business that I'm doing. But I had to really stop and think about that. So it's a pertinent conversation we're having because I stopped and thought and said, I am not going to say I've got a busy day today and that I'm going to really struggle to get done everything that I need to get done in the day. 
I was just going, I'm going to go into the day thinking about, you know, being present and enjoying whatever comes from the day in terms of the tasks. Now that... That's, you must have been that's, listening to our podcast. I must have been. It was kind of really weird that I've... And hence the fact we're having a conversation about it, but that that seems to be the case a lot in our lives, doesn't it? <laughs> That's so funny. We're both, we both we we tried to organise two meetings today, and it was so complicated. One of them was only a quarter of an hour, and the other one was recording the podcast, and then it was going to be put off for two days and moved by quarter of an hour here there. Like that's exactly that's the reality of two technically busy calendars. But in fact, everything's worked out really smoothly. So I think this is so worth questioning. Yes, I'm absolutely. happy to be talking about it. It feels to me, even just as we talk, as though it's creating some space inside me. Because I've noticed recently people often say, oh, yes, I'm really busy, but that's good, isn't it? They say they're in business and they say that's good, isn't it? And I can feel the question like it's better. They know it's better to be busy because it's awful to be not busy because it means you haven't got enough business. But there's that hovering question. I, I want to have the business, but I don't want to be so busy. And you said it before. You said there's comfort in being busy. There's a safety in being busy. So therefore, we know that if we're busy, then... And I think there's a false safety in it there's, because we can be busy and feel safe about it, but be doing the wrong thing and our businesses are slowly, you know, not achieving what they want to achieve at the end of the day so you go well it's not my fault because i've been busy okay so it's almost exactly. like there's this it's almost like there's this well uh, excuse well i've been busy and i've worked really hard so therefore if i don't get the results then it's not my fault exactly I think there can be an element of that that goes on in, in our world too and so therefore it becomes an excuse yes i was talking really to my team today um and I realised there's one of them who I don't connect with that much. And it's fine because she connects with the manager in the business. But I could feel that there was a story that runs in my head, which is about my busyness. And yes, I do have quite a lot of things to do. And yes, I have taken care of it. Like she always has somebody to go to if she needs some help with something. And she knows that and they get on really well together. But I felt uncomfortable. And the main reason I feel uncomfortable is because I have this little spin that goes in my head about being busy and having a lot to do. That means that I don't have quite so much space for people. And if I didn't have the spin, I reckon I can be doing just as much or I might do slightly different things as well, but I would have more space for people. And that's my choice, that's my responsibility. But I was doing that thing, it's like, oh, I'm so busy, that's why I don't manage to connect as much as I feel would be good. I was, I was making it into an excuse. And the other thing that people do, not only do they make it into an excuse, they can also make it into being, a, a, there's a martyrdom associated with it. They become oh, yes. martyrs. <laughs> Oh, I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm so amazing. <laughs> I'm suffering so much. <laughs> um, and I just do it for my business. My business needs me so much. The world needs me so much. And I'm willing to suffer for all of you. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> and look, the reality is, um, I see that a lot. I see the excuse element and the martyrdom element a lot. And look, at certain points of my career and life, I probably done it as well so i think that we've probably been all guilty of it so none of us are, are beyond that sort of thought process but it, it's it's really good to to probably label it and explain it because then we go because when you get asked that question about or you ask yourself about that question about being busy you can even also ask that question is this a, does this become an excuse does it become a safety does it become am i being a martyr you know all these things actually help you then self-correct to go well actually Maybe I do need to adjust the way that I think about the, the term busy in business and and get, um, I suppose, honest about it with yourself, which comes back to the consciousness that I spoke about and asking the right questions about what you're doing. And does that mean that you're, if you keep doing that, you're going to end up with 
you know, the best outcome of your time. I love the fact that you're talking about consciousness. You always used to say to me, you shouldn't use the word conscious, Sarah. It'll put people off. <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> that you're using the word conscious. I don't remember that, but that's convenient short-term memory. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so so what I'm um, what what's going through my mind around this busyness thing is that it makes an enormous difference the questions that we ask that I could look at my day or I can look at what I'm wanting to create in my business and I can also look at what's a really good use of my time and I can also look at what do I love doing what you know what really gives me joy to show up for i've seen some people who are so fixated on what they love that they actually abandon parts of their business and that's not responsible and i've learned that it makes me stronger to do some of the bits that i don't like especially when they need to be done of course they can always be solved in the long term um i i think that this area about questions this is what always takes us onto that edge the edge of like where we don't really know the answer we don't know what it's going to produce so it doesn't feel safe but that that's a very dynamic place it's very alive and so i'm wondering what i, I know for example at the moment i can keep doing what i'm doing and keep improving it but i have this gnawing feeling all the time that if i could ask a better question I would come out with a better answer would that actually greatly simplify what I'm trying to do. And it would be an answer like instead of having to sell 20 or 30 or 40 or 100 of these things, I could make one sale and get 20 at a time. So nothing, nothing remarkable, but that's where I see it's very easy. I can stay busy in the selling one at a time, for example, or I can do the a little bit more demanding work of saying, what would it take for me to get to the point where we're selling lots of the same thing in one transaction? Um, it takes isn't a bit of work, but that's doable work. But isn't that just about um, efficiency of, of time and productivity, the, the example that you're using there? Because what I also got from what you're talking about then is that is this just a, a a pattern that will continue on that you feel you 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 ask the question and you feel uncomfortable you, you solve it in terms of what you're going to do next and then um then you get uncomfortable again and yep. and, I think and, so. and continually ask because the continual asking the question means that you're going to end up being uncomfortable because you've asked the question that you may not know the answer. And as soon as we don't know the answer to someone, we start something, we start to feel uncomfortable about it. So is this just a, a, a circle of being comfortable, uncomfortable, comfortable, but uncomfortable about the time, about the, the time and the busyness? Probably it is. Um, it feels to me though, that if we could handle the being uncomfortable, and actually perhaps reframe that just like we reframed being busy. So instead of seeing it as being uncomfortable, see it as, you know, people talk about riding the wave, something like that. You know, we're really on the cutting edge for us. Possibly the example I gave was not that cutting edge, but, um, but just questioning, being more willing to question the comfort zones and look for what the outcomes that we really want, or for example, look for a way of doing it that would mean that I'd be a whole lot less busy. I wouldn't have to do so much. So yes, it's productivity, but I think that it's really easy to be pro productive at a level. Mm. And, and it's how do you, how and possibly when do you go up a level? Could you skip a few levels if you asked a better question? Um, and, and bringing the busyness into it, how can I do it in a way so that I'm less busy, or I have more time for the things that I love, or I have more time for reflection and for making decisions, uh, all of those kinds of things. There's an extension to that too, uh, with the word value. And we have touched upon this before in previous podcasts, but if you can solve a problem, that means you have to work less hard. That means you've got more time and more time can sometimes make you feel, as you said before, uncomfortable because you need to actually fill that time with doing something. And so 
maybe there's something in that to say, well, we don't want to solve that problem because it means it will free up our time. We don't really want to free up the time. So we're going in this sort of hamster wheel of decision making. That's brilliant because actually the answer to the whole, some of the questions that I was asking at the beginning is around the quality of the time if we're not so busy. Generally speaking, busy people don't fill their, their not busy time very well, I think. Mm. Uh, and that's why they're busy all the time. It's almost like they don't know what to do with themselves. They lose their sense of definition when they're not busy. If we could feel that that less busy time was really full or really fulfilling or impactful, then there would be a very good reason not to be busy all the time. And this is a conversation that I have with business owners when, especially when they're getting towards thinking about exit and thinking about moving their businesses on. And um, I said, that's great. Let's, let's have a conversation about that and let's talk about realising the value in your business. And then the next question I ask, you go, what are you going to do the day after when you wake up and you have nothing to do? <laughs> What are you going to do then? You're so mean, and, uh, Matt. <laughs> well, no, it's it's sobering. It's basically a sobering conversation because um, that's when they start to really think about this because they might have been motivated to their, sell their businesses for a particular reason. And it could be fatigue. It could be what I'm doing is I'm checking in with them to see is it the right reasons for why they want to sell their business as opposed to um, reasons that aren't probably the right reasons for them. And that's part of the process that I'll check in with because when you have the opportunity, um, you know, because so many times I hear people saying, oh, if I had more time, I'd be able to do X, okay? And it could be X inside the business. So even my team might say, oh, you know, if I had more time, I'd be able to service my clients better. And But I've heard the same statement for the last 10 years, okay, from the same people. And I go, well, and then when I give them the opportunity to do that, they don't do it. And it's because they don't, probably know or have the confidence to know what they do next is just a safety thing and it's the same with business owners that go well it's time to sell the business if that's the right thing to do what am i going to do with my time post that and it's a scary scary you, you almost watch the color drain out of some people's faces when you say you have no to-do list tomorrow you've got nothing to do tomorrow okay it's gone email's gone you know, conversation meetings are gone. Everything's gone. You've got nothing to do tomorrow. What are you going to do? And it's like Even your email somebody... address has changed. No identity. <laughs> That's right. And and you watch you watch people just go. Oh, and some people get very creative very quickly, or they go to the easy thing and say, "Oh, I'd play more golf, or I'd go surfing, or I'd." you know, do something. And I'll go, yeah, that's great for the first month. What are you going to do after that? Because <laughs> you'll be bored stupid. Um, so it, it's a it's a thing. It really, really is a thing. And, and, and I suppose that's why um, we get caught up in our own businesses and get caught up in our own lives. And there's this comfort and safety because there's this fear. And it is a fear for some people. And I've faced at certain points in time where I go, I really don't like not being busy. I really don't like not making a contribution or feeling like I'm doing something to progress something. I find it challenging not to be in that space. And that's when I know um, that's my challenge for myself to go, I need to make sure I keep asking those questions. So I'm no different to anyone else. And sometimes I meet people who possibly have been forced for some reason to stop for three months or nine months or even 18 months maybe they had an accident or something happened or they their, their business fell apart or whatever. There's many different reasons, some people through COVID as well. And it's really interesting when people have time because clearly it is very difficult to begin with, but I see time and time again that it is also the birthplace of new initiatives. Uh, so a lot can come out of time that isn't so crammed full of activity. And I think that we need to recognize that. I've been reflecting a lot recently on creativity because I'm a fairly creative person. I like to feel that I'm creating things. And when I get very busy, I feel less of that. I have to remind myself, well, you're creating, your business itself is a creative project and your life is a creative project. And sometimes I hunger for just doing something like writing or like kind of small creativity rather than big creativity. 
Um, and my story is when I'm really busy, I don't have as much time to be creative. But just like the people in your business, sometimes I have more time and I don't use it to be creative because I'm so used to be being busy that the creativity doesn't sit. It's like it, the spring isn't there so easily. So for, for real creativity, I feel we need spaciousness. It's not so much about just I'm either busy or I'm not busy, but we need spaciousness. We need a different, we need to play with time in a different way from this productivity and filling the hours or doing more hours than anybody else, which is so easy to get into. It's a different rhythm. And that I think is what's frequently missing in business is that more natural rhythm of life so that business can become a seamless part of nature and life, which is where I feel that it really sits actually. But we've turned it into something that can be a bit of a frenzy. Yeah, and it becomes constricting and becomes sort of an imprisonment to, to a degree because it's that repetitiveness. And by creating space, which therefore allows for creativity, opens up such a, a greater opportunity to do something more with your time. And I was reflecting then when you're talking about the word resentment comes up and, and resentment in terms of the fact that you may have worked really, really hard for a period of time. And then, and I see this when people turn an age, like, you know, a, a milestone age, they sort of hit, I know, 30, 40, 50 or 60 or something like that. And, and they, and the ones that start to, to um, feel resentment or they feel like they don't feel happy about the age that they're hitting. And, or, or, and, and I look at that and go, why is that the case? Whereas other people don't. And I think it comes back to this particular term of not making choice at the time when you can make a choice, not creating space to then be very clear about what's the best pathway, pathway to, to go next. And that questioning around saying, what's the best use of my time? Or what can I do that's going to give me the greatest joy or fulfillment, as you say? And I think that that's a very uh, easy thing to say, but very difficult and challenging thing to do. Well, even talking about it now, I can feel, just when I was talking about creativity before and the spaciousness and the rhythm of it, and I feel how much sheer pleasure it gives me. Just it's such a good feeling to me to have that kind of spaciousness. And if I think, well, business is an extremely creative activity and life also is an extremely creative activity. And I feel how if I could approach my business and my life with that creativity rather than the busyness, even as I work pretty light and um, and I enjoy even the busyness most of the time, but I feel that it's a poor substitute for creativity actually. And so mm. there's something happening inside me as we speak about this, which um, I, I love that feeling. It's It's like the creativity is calling me and it's not a creativity that's calling me to kind of hide off in a corner and write a book or make something. It's more like something to step into. It would be such an upgrade to approach business that way. So much more expansive, so much more that could be created and create so much more opportunity for other people as well in a more spacious environment that I, I can feel it's almost like my something inside me saying, go on, yes, go on, Sarah, go on, go on. Just like dare to do it dare to do what you would really love to do rather than making excuses saying, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time to be creative. So then why don't you do it? Or why don't we do it? No, I'm not going to answer that question. I don't care why I don't do it. I'm sorry, Matt, I think it's a really bad question. I don't want to pay attention to more of that. I just want to ask, how, how could I do that? Like, how could I step into that more creative frame which gives me so much joy and feels so rich to me 
and I know will be good for business and I know it'll be good for me. It'll be good for my, my husband. It'll be good for all the people that I care about. It's like, I'm not even sure that there's a how-to question in it. I, if I'm really honest, what I feel is that there's a decision in it that I need to make that that's what I'm doing. And having seen it now, I can't unsee it. So then you do it. So then I do it. So, uh, many months ago, I made a decision just shortly before recording one, one of our podcasts about exercising in a certain way. And you mm -hmm. challenged me, said, will you keep it, Sarah? Because I came along and said I made the decision and I, immediately I made that decision. I started doing it. I've kept doing it ever since then. And it feels like one of those moments that it, it's a decision moment. And inside me, the decision is already there because once I feel that feeling, it's like, how can you turn away from that? That's such a good feeling. I, I wouldn't want to be back in busy Sarah if I can feel creative Sarah and the, the I think the point is that what I, what I've solved is I saw creativity as an alternative to busyness now I see it as a more as a way of uh, it's like there's a greater productivity in it if you like it can create more so I don't need the busyness it's like going to a different level where busyness becomes obsolete I didn't expect that from this conversation I must say that's good. So therefore, it's an expansion rather than an alternative. Exactly. And it's an yeah. inclusive expansion. It includes all the benefits that you get from being productive and being busy and all of that. Only the one thing is you can drop the busyness. We're going to have to change the name. It can't be business anymore. <laughs> like, oh, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> are we going to create a new word for business, are we? When I was getting dressed this morning, I was thinking, actually, it must have been on my mind all day. I was thinking, what would be a different word from business? Maybe I was thinking about commerce. What does commerce really mean? And the com bit I know means with. So it's like yeah. commerce has this feeling of doing things together. But it didn't quite feel like the answer. And enterprise is like a bit kind of pompous, really. It's also a very nice word, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's a much nicer word than business. I don't think I'm here to change the vocabulary of business but I, I was going through my mind it's like yeah we need to we really need a different feeling in it I, I feel it would be so good for people so maybe it's not necessarily changing the word but maybe that's the reminder is that every time you say the word business you think of the word busy and you think well is there a better way I take it as a kind of negative trigger it's kind of stimulation <laughs> to do better <laughs> yeah, that's right. To say, well, to, to get to the place that you obviously have, have, have seen and working now towards because of the fact that you've made that decision. Yes, it's like, um, for me, the way I do it, that feeling, because I, I, I tend to do things through a sort of sensing feeling, that's like um, a touchstone or a kind of north star and, and a little reminder. And probably I only need the word creativity really but because i've made that shift in my mind that being creative is not an alternative it's an expansion i just need to think the word creativity think ah oh, i'm a creator in this business i'm not a business owner i'm a creator and in my life and then immediately it shifts me into a different mode i think that's really cool the statement about a business creator and a creator in your own life because that is, when, when I believe, and this is me personally, for me, is that you need the little triggers to help remind you these things. And, and the words are the, sometimes the triggers or the visualisations or whatever it helps you to, to remember because you can get caught up. So to say that I am the creator and I'm in a creative environment and these are the, the little things to help you remind you not get taken back into the, the old world of busyness. And I would love the people who work with me to feel also that they're creators. It's not like Sarah's the creator and everyone else is somehow in service to that. That's exactly the opposite of how I feel it. What I love is the feeling that we're creating things together and people bring their own creativity into it and their own kind of whole whole person into it. So they don't have a hat on for business and then they have another hat at home. We just wear one hat and we put ourselves fully into whatever we're doing. We're present, we're alive, we're engaged, we're creative. Even if you're doing a really boring thing, I think that that feeling that that boring thing is part of creating the big thing. 
is a really important feeling. So for you, it's a creative collaboration. So it's creativeness from all people coming together with a common vision or goal. It is, yes, because it's definitely not just a Sarah. It's not just like Sarah creates. It's not that. That that that's beautiful. I mean, I love creating things anyway. But the the most joyful experiences I've had in my life have always been creating with somebody else. When I created some there's some recordings I created with a musician, and it was like it's like being in paradise when you reach that point of true creativity with another human being. It's beyond any other experience that I've ever had. It's 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 all it's hard to speak about it. It's so beautiful. And we're capable of that when it doesn't always happen, but when it clicks like that and there's this harmony and kind of flow between you and the feeling of aliveness and something comes out of it that's beautiful. That is a that is a truly wonderful experience. And like we can have that in business as well. And that is about being present in that moment with other people creating something special that I'm sure that if anyone asked you, how do you feel today? You wouldn't say busy. You put it spot on. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's probably maybe the answer to the, the question that you posed at the start. It's certainly my answer. It, it, I mean, it satisfied me, as I said, way more than I expected when I brought up the topic. I didn't think that we would get there so quickly. But look, that's it. This is like a very creative exchange that's happening. And mm. so answers come out just from this exchange. That's exactly what we're talking about, actually. This is just like it's, it's contained within about 45 minutes. But to do that, not just in a 45 minute podcast, but in a business that lasts over many years and then in a life that lasts even more years, that that's to me the pleasure of life. So thank you for sharing it with me. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Well, I enjoy every conversation that we had together, to be quite honest. And I would never label it as being something that makes me busy, which is a good thing. <laughs> so I think that, um, you know, and I was reflecting then, there's, when people ask you, you know, and your automatic response is busy, is there another word that we should say? Say, you know, you can say good or busy. Um, the word joy sort of came to mind, but that doesn't... You can say of... I'm happy. I'm feeling really happy today. Yeah, right. <laughs> Present, happy, <laughs> joyful, fulfilled, all those wonderful words. And I think that that's really... And we're all striving for that. There's no doubt about that in business or in life. And people would be a little bit surprised if you answered like that in business, wouldn't they? Just kind of n knock their thinking a little bit. I think that that's quite fun. Exactly. Well, been another great chat, Sarah. Thanks very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for listening to The Spirit of Business with Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. We'll be back next week with another episode. You'll find the show notes with links and other useful information on our website, spiritofbusiness.live. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. 